<coughs> Welcome dear friends to my video lecture on communication net paper 1 unit 4 communication I would like to finish within one single video if it is not possible due to the technical problem we will make it into two of course you know uh, you will understand my difficulty here so let us try to get into the topic let me introduce myself for those who do not know me i am dr i j sudas a former associate professor and a research supervisor from sensarius college of education polykote all along my life i was preparing students for a, a net exam a set exams you know uh, from the beginning so after retirement also i am doing this uh, great job of motivating students net students uh, uh, set students etc so a lot of videos uh, my uh, youtube channel name is jcc if you enter into that you know go through the playlist you will be getting around you know 80 to 90 uh, videos related to uh, research uh, uh, not uh, not only research the entire uh, national eligibility test paper one as well as paper two education so i hope you know please uh, go through the uh, you know the videos there i'm sure you'll be able to crack the net exam so easily but you know all the videos are uh, long form videos just in order to give you the comprehensive idea i hope you know some of you have appreciated that many of you are watching that also god bless you abundantly let us straight away enter into the topic <coughs> unit 4 ugc net communication yeah the following are the topics covered in unit 4 communication meaning types characteristics etc then effective communication verbal non-verbal intercultural group communication classroom communication etc the barriers to effective communication mass media and society so i first i am giving you some insights into the topics and uh, along with that immediately i am giving you some uh, expected questions also i'm sure you will be enjoying all this and then you will have a thorough understanding of this unit uh, communication unit 4 communication now what is communication communication is like passing notes in class but on a bigger scale it is the way we share thoughts feelings ideas with each other imagine uh, imagine it as a bridge connecting two islands without this bridge the islands would be isolated and unable to interact communication is so much essential in human life the meaning and basics of communication what is the meaning of communication? Communication is the process of exchanging information, thoughts, ideas and emotions between individuals or groups, utilizing various mediums, media, mediums and uh, channels. It is a means to convey a message from a sender to a receiver and it is essential for understanding, coordination, collaboration and decision making. You know, all these things I'm sure you would have uh, studied, you know, in BAT, MRT, etc. Just to remind you of those insight I am giving all this. Right. Effective communication ensures that the intended message, the planned message, is accurately interpreted and acted upon by the recipient, by the receiver. Recipient means a receiver, one who gets the message. What are the fundamental components of communication? center the center in a, i mean there are so many components but the first one will be center the center initiates the communication process by encoding the message which involves converting thoughts ideas or emotions into a form that can be transmitted effectively such as spoken words written text gestures or visual cues so this is what the center does what is the message? The message is the content or information that the sender wishes to convey to the receiver. It can be verbal, non-verbal, written or visual and it should be uh, clear, uh, it should be clear, concise and tailored to the receiver's understanding. 
it should be to the level of the receiver's understanding in other words the channel the channel is the medium through which the message is transmitted from the sender to the receiver it can be face to face uh, is to you know it can be face to face uh, written communication digital platforms uh, audio visual mediums or any other means that facilitate the transfer of the message then receiver the receiver is the individual or group uh, for whom the message is intended they they decode and interpret the message striving to comprehend the sender's intentions and meaning accurately then feedback feedback is the response or reaction provided by the receiver to the sender it allows the sender to coach the effectiveness of their message and make necessary adjustments for better communication the context the context refers to the circumstances environment or situation in which the communication takes place it plays a crucial role in interpreting the message accurately and understanding the sender's uh, intent plan what is the significance of communication to establish relationships effective communication is vital for building and maintaining healthy relationships whether in personal professional or social areas spheres clear communication fosters uh, trust understanding and empathy among individuals then it is for conflict resolution communication helps in resolving conflicts by providing a platform for expressing concerns discussing differences and finding mutually agreeable solutions open dialogue enables the parties to comprehend each other's perspectives and work towards reconciliation then decision making and problem solving in any organization or group efficient communication facilitates informed decision making and problem solving processes it ensures that the relevant information is shared analyzed and used to make strategic choices facilitating innovation and creativity a culture of open communication encourages the exchange of innovative ideas and creative solutions when individuals can freely express their thoughts and opinions it stimulates innovation uh, novelty and growth within the organization influence and per- persuasion communication is used to compel someone for a good work or something like effective communication allows individuals to influence and persuade others whether it is in marketing politics or everyday interactions persuasive communication i mean convincing you know communication is crucial for conveying a message and gaining support learning and education communication is very much needed in learning and education communication is the cornerstone of learning and education teachers convey knowledge to students and students seek clarification and guidance through effective communication it enhances the learning experience and promotes academic growth some of the questions we can ask you know for the meaning of communication what is the primary purpose of communication a to exchange information and ideas b to manipulate others c to show off one's knowledge uh, d to remain silent what is the correct answer to exchange information and ideas including feelings you know everything ideas and feelings communication is the process of sharing information ideas thoughts and feelings to achieve a common understanding between sender and receiver <coughs> what is a non verbal communication a communication using words or language b communication without using words c communication using advanced technology d communication through written messages so what should be the correct answer what is non verbal communication it is communication without using words non verbal communication includes gestures facial expressions body language and other visual auditory or tactile signals that is visual means that can be seen auditory means that can be heard you know hearing tactile signal means a touch right so uh, non verbal communication in- includes gestures facial expressions body language and other visual auditory or tactile signals that convey a message 
without the use of spoken or written words. In the communication process, what is the receiver's role? A. Encode the message. B. Transmit the message. C. Decode the message. D. Create the message. So correct answer will be decoding the message. The receiver's role is to decode or interpret the message received from the center to understand the intended meaning. I mean the planned meaning in other words. What is What was in the mind of the center intended meaning. So the receiver's role is to decode or interpret the message received from the center to understand the intended meaning. What is feedback in communication? A. The initial message sent by the sender. B. The response or reaction to the message by the receiver. C. The process of encoding a message. D. The process of decoding a message. What should be the correct answer? The response or reaction to the message by the receiver. How to explain? Feedback is the receiver's response or reaction to the sender's message indicating how well the message was understood by the receiver. That is the idea. No? Feedback is very essential. Then, what is the significance of active listening in effective communication? What is the significance of active listening in effective communication? A. It encourages interruptions during communication. B. It demonstrates uh, a lack of interest in the conversation. C. It enhances understanding and rapport. D. It promotes speaking more than listening. Correct answer would be it enhances understanding and rapport. Very important one, this one. What is the significance of active listening? We try to understand the receiver. We understand, you know, the sender, one who sends the message. That's the idea here. So, it enhances understanding and rapport. Active listening involves fully focusing, understanding, responding and remembering what is being said leading to better comprehension and building stronger relationships. What is the barrier to effective communication? A clear and concise message, B active listening, C noise and distractions, D open body language. So what should be the barrier to effective communication? That is noise and distractions. Noise and distractions can interfere with the communication process, making it difficult for the message to be accurately received or understood. You are unable to understand the uh, message fully. That is the idea. The noise or distractions uh, make it uh, uh, impossible to uh, listen to the message completely. That is the idea here. What is the channel referred to in communication? A. The emotional state of the receiver. B. The medium or method used to transmit the message. Transmit means to pass the message. C. To culture, uh, the culture of the center. D. The language used in the message. Which should be the right one channel. That is the medium or method used to pass the message to another person. To transmit the message to another person. The channel is the means through which a message is transmitted such as face to face written, electronic or other forms. What is the key characteristic of effective communication? A. One way transmission. B. Ambiguity and confusion. C. Clarity and understanding. D. Excessive use of jargon. What is the key characteristic of effective communication? That, is, that should be clarity and understanding. Ambiguity means, uh, you know, uh, double meaning, something like, you know, you understand in a different manner, ambiguity. So, what is the correct uh, answer for this question? Key characteristic of effective communication that is clarity and understanding. Effective communication ensures that the message is clear, easily comprehensible, that is understandable, and leads to a shared understanding between the sender and the receiver. What is the primary objective of written communication? A. To convey tone and body language. B. To share immediate feedback. C. To provide a permanent record. D. To encourage face-to-face -face interactions. What should be the correct answer? To provide a permanent record. You know, to, the, what is the primary objective of written communication? That is to provide a permanent record. Written communication creates a lasting record of information allowing reference and verification at a later date. 
So written communication creates a, his, a lasting record of information. Permanent. Now, for example, this uh, will, you know, people are writing will, uh, that wealth, you know. So it is for lasting, you know, everlasting in a, in a way, you know, as a permanent. So written communication creates a lasting record of information, allowing reference and verification at a later time. Even after 50 years, uh, that could be used, you know, that is the idea here. Yeah? Uh, what is the role of cultural awareness in communication? A. To ignore cultural differences for a uniform message. B. To avoid communication with the diverse cultures. C. To understand and respect cultural differences. D. To impose one's culture on others. So the, what should be the correct answer? To understand and respect cultural differences. Cultural awareness helps in understanding and respecting the differences in culture, language, norms and values, enabling effective communication across diverse groups. So that is cultural awareness. So what is the question here? What is the role of cultural awareness in communication? That is, cultural awareness helps in understanding and respecting the differences in culture, language, norms and values, enabling uh, effective communication across diverse groups, different groups. What is the primary purpose of communication? A. To exchange information, B. To manipulate others, C. To confuse the audience, D. To remain silent. <coughs> so the correct answer should be to exchange information. How to explain? Communication serves as a means to convey information, ideas or emotions between individuals. <coughs> Which of the following is a non-verbal form of communication? A. Writing and email. B. Speaking on the phone. C. Gestures and body language. D. Sending a text message. Gestures and body language. Non-verbal communication includes actions, gestures and expressions rather than words. When we communicate, what is the role of feedback? When we communicate, what is the role of feedback? <coughs> A. It is not important in communication. B. It helps us gauge the effectiveness of our message. C. It is only required in written communication. D. It delays the communication process. So what should be the correct answer? It helps us gauge the effectiveness of our message. It helps us gauge the effectiveness of our message. Feedback allows us to assess how well our message was received and understood. Which communication model represents a communication as a linear process from center to receiver? A. Transactional model B. Interactive model C. Linear model D. Feedback model That is linear model The linear model portrays communication as a one-way process from center to receiver without feedback. In written communication, what is the purpose of punctuation? A. To confuse the reader B. To make the text longer. C. To clarify meaning and structure. D. To save paper. Punctuation we know. No? <coughs> the comma, full stop, all these things. Eh? <coughs> In order to give a pause and all we are doing that. No Punctuation. That is to clarify meaning and structure. Punctuation helps convey the intended meaning and the structure of written communication. Punctuation helps convey the planned meaning and structure of written communication. See what I am doing is just now, it is written, these two words, two sentences. Punctuation helps convey the intended meaning and structure of written communication. What I do, I make a pause here and there, sometimes fluctuation of voice in order to make the message very clear. Punctuation helps convey the intended meaning, intended meaning and the structure of written communication. So like that uh, where we have to stop, we stop, we give a gap and all, no? so punctuation, comma, full stop, all these things. <clears throat> what is the term for communication that occurs between individuals of different cultural backgrounds? What is the term for communication which, yeah. Uh, that occurs between individuals of different cultural backgrounds. A. Cross species communication. B. Intercultural communication. C. Interpersonal communication. 
the intrapersonal communication so it's a, it, it's a communication between individuals isn't it so that is intercultural with different cultures communication of people from different cultures that is intercultural communication intercultural communication involves interactions between people from different cultures what is the primary channel of communication in a face to face conversation primary channel of communication in a face to face conversation a email b phone call c body language and spoken words d video conference correct answer will be body language and spoken words in face to face communication the primary channels are verbal and non verbal cues which of the following is not a component of the communication process which of the following is not a component of the communication process a receiver b sender c message d audience audience will not come in the communication process of course we know that no that a uh, sender uh, you know medium uh, message you know receiver feedback you know, like that there is a loop but their audience will not be there so the audience is not typically considered a component a part of the communication process but it is an external factor <coughs> Which type of communication involves using symbols and signs, such as traffic signs or emojis, to convey messages? Which type of communication? Verbal communication. B. Non-verbal communication. C. Written communication. D. Symbolic communication. That is symbolic communication. Symbolic communication through symbols, you know, like emoji, you know, all such things. Small flowers, rose petals, something like. So symbolic communication relies on symbols and signs to convey meaning. What is the term for communication that occurs within an individual's mind involving self-talk and personal reflection? What is the term for communication that occurs within an individual's mind involving self-talk and personal reflection? There is a particular word for that. That is that is intrapersonal communication. Interpersonal communication means. that is a communication between two or three persons intra you know you must see the word intra personal communication means self talk and personal reflections <coughs> so a interpersonal communication b intra personal communication c mass communication d group communication that is intra personal communication intra personal communication refers to communication with one self involving thoughts and self reflection then what is communication a the transmission of messages through spoken or written words b the exchange of ideas thoughts or information between individuals or groups c the interpretation of non verbal cues like body language and facial expressions d the process of creating visual presentations for conveying information of course they are confused with a lot of sentences but you know the correct uh, uh, you know uh, Uh, meaning you must know that you will know the correct answer the exchange of ideas thoughts or information between individuals or groups communication involves the exchange of information ideas or thoughts between individuals or groups through various verbal non verbal or written ways means written means or written ways written methods <coughs> which of the following is a non verbal form of communication A speaking, B writing, C gestures, D emails. That is gestures. Non-verbal communication includes gestures, facial expressions, body language, and other forms of expression without using words. Very important one. In communication process, what is the role of the receiver? A encoding the message, B transmitting the message, C decoding and interpreting the message, D initiating the communication. what should be the correct answer decoding and interpreting the message the receiver's role involves interpreting and understanding the message received from the sender through the process of decoding so that is the idea decoding and interpreting the message that is the role of uh, the receiver in you know that is uh, decoding and interpreting both the receiver's role involves interpreting and understanding the message received from the sender through the process of decoding through the letter through the phone call etc etc you are the receiver 
uh, understands or interprets what is given through this media from the center. No? That is the idea here. <coughs> Which communication model includes feedback from the receiver to the center? Which communication model includes feedback from the receiver to the center? A. Linear communication model. B. Transactional communication model. C. Interactive communication model. C. Circular communication model. That is transactional communication model. In transactional communication model, communication is a dynamic two-way process that involves feedback from both the center and the receiver. Dear friends, I would like to suggest one thing. Whenever you come across such questions, there will be four alternatives, isn't it? All models are given here, but uh, it is related to only one model of our answer. But then there are other three uh, models are there. See, when, whenever you come across such question, immediately go to the internet and put a linear con communication model. You get, to, uh, you will understand the meaning of this linear communication model. This is how you must see the questions. You know, all the questions cannot be exhausted. But then, from one question you can get to know so many other things. So this is this is how you must prepare your net exam. See, when you are, if you are looking at this, you know, linear communication model, transactional communication model, interactive communication model, circular communication model. Here, I am giving explanation only for transactional communication model. But you can get explanations from uh, the internet for other uh, communication models. That you must do, you know, so that you get enlightenment, you know, into this, uh, uh, you know, topic. Any topic for that matter, you must do that. You know, there will be four alternatives. Only one alternative, one option will be the correct one. What about the three others? Of course, they are wrong. But nevertheless, they are also important. Immediately go to the internet and then get to know what it is exactly. It is just to put it in the Google, you know, the bar, you know, what is linear communication model? What is transactional communication? You, you see, you will be getting a lot of knowledge out of that. Not only that, you will be you will become very confident also in communication in any topic for that matter. I request you to do this. While you are having one question, you can have many more questions by entering into the internet simultaneously. Right. Thank you very much for listening to this piece of instruction. So here, what is the question? Which communication model includes feedback from the receiver to the center? That is transactional communication model. In the transactional communication model, communication is a dynamic two-way process that involves feedback from both the center and the receiver. Which of the following barriers to communication uh, is related to language differences and interpretations? A. Semantic barrier, B. Psychological barrier, C. Physical barrier, D. Cultural barrier. Correct answer will be semantic barrier. Semantic barriers arise from differences in language, meanings of words and interpretations of messages. Semantics, so you must understand this. Immediately go for other barriers. What is psychological barrier, physical barrier, cultural barrier? Just put it in the internet. You will get uh, the meanings of those things also. Now we know a semantic barrier. Semantic barriers arise from differences in language, meanings of words and interpretations of messages. What is an example of interpersonal communication? A. Sending a memo to all employees. B. Giving a presentation to a large audience. C. Having a one-to-one -one conversation with a colleague. D. Broadcasting a message over the radio. The correct answer will be having a one-to-one -one conversation with a colleague. Interpersonal communication involves communication between individuals, typically in a face-to-face -face or small group setting. Which communication model is asynchronous in nature? You know, this synchronous and asynchronous uh, uh, communication will be there in, uh, in even in research also it is there, in uh, media education also it is there. What does this mean? You know? Uh, so, which communication channel is asynchronous in nature? That is, uh, at the same time it, is, it won't be happening. You speak something and after some time you, uh, you come to know uh, what is forward. That's the way, no? So, with, which communication channel is asynchronous in nature? That is, uh, A, phone call, B, email, C, video conference, the D, face to face. That is email. See, as soon as it is sent, you read exactly 
uh, what is given there. Email allows communication to occur at different times, making it asynchronous. Unlike phone calls or video conference, conferences that require real time interaction. I think you must know all these words, I think. Uh, real time interaction means at the same time it is happening. You are speaking, someone is listening at the same time. Whereas email, even after two, two days you can see the email. You can open the uh, you know email portal and then see email. So that way it is asynchronous. It is not happening at the same time, asynchronous. Please uh, mark these words because often uh, th th this question is often asked. What is the purpose of formal communication in an organization? What is the purpose of formal communication in an organization? A. Fostering informal relationship among employees. B. Sharing personal opinions and experiences. C. Conveying official information and instructions. D. Facilitating team building activities. Correct answer will be conveying official information and instructions. Formal communication in an organization serves to transmit official information, policies, uh, procedures and instruction to employees. What is formal communication? Very word formal indicates the rules and regulations. For an example, in any institution for that matter, school or college or any social institution will have this formal communication. There will be a top person. No? For an example, in a college or in a school, headmaster, in a college, uh, principal. So he will be instructing certain things. He will be giving us uh, rules and regulations to teachers, uh, professors, uh, non-teaching staff and students. You know, it's, it's like that. So formal communication means with the rules and regulations normally. The very word formal uh, indicates that. Formal communication in an organization serves to transmit official information policies, procedures and instructions to employees. What is the acronym SWOT stand for in communication analysis? This is something unique and very important also nowadays. All the companies are having this type of communication technique, you know, even the companies in institutions, everything. What does the acronym SWOT stand for in communication analysis? A. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Of course, different uh, options are given, but in the first is the right one. Yes, S means uh, strength, uh, W indicates uh, weaknesses, O indicates opportunities, T indicates uh, threats. So, uh, that is the idea here. Correct answer, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. SWOT analysis is a strategic planning tool used to evaluate strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Which communication style focuses on cooperation and relationship building? Which communication style focuses on cooperation and relationship building? A. Assertive B. Aggressive C. Passive D. Collaborative See here we talk about cooperation relation building and naturally collaborative uh, communication style, no doubt about it. Collaborative communication style emphasizes working together, cooperation and uh, finding mutually beneficial solutions for all parties, for all the people involved. Which of the following is not a key element of communication? A. Center, B. Receiver, C. Feedback, D. Silence. Correct answer will be T, silence. No? It's not a key element of communication, silence. Silence is not an element of communication, but the absence of communication. In verbal communication, what does the term encoding refer to? Encoding. Encoding, decoding. Encoding by the sender. You know? Decoding by the receiver. That is how we have to understand once and for all. Okay, in verbal communication, what does the term encoding refer to? A. Decoding the message. B. The use of nonverbal cues. C. Converting thoughts into words. D. Listening attentively. So the C. Converting thoughts into words. That is encoding. Encoding is the process of converting one's thoughts and ideas into words or symbols. So th uh, that is the definition of encoding. Encoding is the process of converting one's thoughts and ideas into words or symbols. Which type of communication occurs when you communicate with your body language and facial expressions? A. Verbal communication B. Nonverbal communication C. Written communication D. Visual communication uh, 
uh, which is the right one non verbal communication here you know body language and facial expressions come under non verbal communication non verbal communication involves body language and facial expressions what is the mist uh, what is the primary purpose of feedback in the communication process primary purpose of feedback in the communication process a to make the message more complex b in, to interrupt the communication c to clarify understanding d to complicate the message to confuse the message to interrupt the message mean to interfere in the communication so what is the primary purpose, purpose of feedback in the communication process that is to clarify meaning right that is the understanding no feedback helps clarify understanding and ensures the message is accurately received feedback helps uh, clarify understanding and ensures the message is accurately received which communica communication channel is most suitable for conveying detailed technical information to a large audience which communication channel is most suitable for conveying detailed technical information to a large audience that is email right uh, conveying detailed technical information email is an effective channel for conveying detailed technical information to a large audience what is the difference between say here you once again i would like to say to you any question for that matter will have four options you may be having the correct answer so many correct answers for the question but you have to see the best answer from the options four options given here so you should not be worried about the other answers which you are keeping in mind please sit to it so you know when when you are given a question you have to see all the four options out of the four options you have to give the correct one so here of course you know when when we talk about communication channel uh, you know so many other answers you may be keeping it for this question so many other answers will be coming <coughs> but from the uh, four, four options you have to take the best one so that way we have to see so which communication channel is most suitable for conveying detailed technical information technical information to a large audience that is email from the options email is an effective channel for conveying detailed technical information to a large audience what is the difference between interpersonal and intrapersonal communication a they are the same thing b interpersonal involves communication with oneself uh, while intrapersonal involves communication between two or more people so many other options are given which is the right one once and for all we we'll, we'll need to know what is interpersonal what is intrapersonal communication that is say the question here what is the difference between interpersonal and intrapersonal what is interpersonal communication that is uh, communication between two or three people uh, inter interpersonal means communication with other people intrapersonal communication is self talk talking to oneself what is the acronym kiss stand for in the context of effective communication what is the acronym kiss stand for in the context of effective communication a keep it simply uh, uh, keep it simple silly b keep it secret sensitive C keep it structured specific D keep it subtle strategic correct answer will be A keep it simple silly Kiss stands for keep it simple silly is a you know is a western phrase actually well we have to understand this yes. uh, Kiss stands for keep it simple silly emphasizing the need for clear and straightforward communication so this uh, kiss you know standing for keep it simple silly emphasizes the need for clear and straight forward communication for that reason you know the westerners used to say this one of course we must know because we are in the international world types of communication verbal communication this is using words to share information when you talk to someone that's verbal communication it could be face to face over the phone or even through the video call but you are using words no that is verbal communication effective communication the power of verbal communication uh, verbal expression uh, you know uh, what is the power of verbal expression communication is a fundamental aspect of human interaction and verbal communication is one of the most prominent forms 
Verbal communication involves the use of words spoken or written to convey ideas, thoughts and information from one person to another. It is a crucial tool in various aspects of life, including personal relationships, professional environments, education and society at large. Effective verbal communication is essential for clear understanding, building relationships, resolving conflicts and achieving success in different uh, endeavors, in different fields in other words. First and foremost, effective verbal communication facilitates a clear understanding. When ideas and thoughts are articulated clearly using appropriate language and conveyed in a well-organized manner, the chances of misinterpretation are significantly reduced. That means uh, the message goes as it is, you know, the full success of the message like when ideas and thoughts are articulated clearly, full message goes to the receiver. Right. Clarity in communication ensures that the intended message is received and understood, comprehended means understood as planned, intended or as planned, fostering a shared understanding among individuals involved in the communication process. Moreover, verbal communication is central to building and maintaining relationships. It is through verbal expression that individuals connect emotionally, share experiences and develop trust and rapport. By effectively conveying feelings, thoughts and concerns, individuals can create a strong sense of empathy and understanding in their relationships. The ability to communicate one's feelings and perspectives openly and respectfully, respectfully is vital for healthy relationships, whether in personal or professional settings. In the professional field, effective verbal communication is uh, very essential, indispensable means unavoidable, very, very necessary in other words. From job interviews and client presentations to team meetings and collaboration, <coughs> it is essential to articulate ideas and information clearly and uh, convincingly, persuasively or convincingly. Effective verbal communication skills can lead to career advancements, improved job performance and successful negotiations. Professionals who can express themselves well often, uh, I mean, uh, professionals who can express themselves well often become effective leaders, influencers and problem solvers within their organizations. Furthermore, verbal communication is a cornerstone for effective education. Teachers utilize verbal communications to impart knowledge, explain concepts and engage students in the learning process. The ability to communicate effectively ensures that students grasp, understand the subject matter, ask questions and participate actively in classroom discussions. Additionally, students who develop strong verbal communication skills excel in academic assignments, presentations and exams. In the broader societal context, verbal communication is very important, crucial for civic engagement, public discourse and social progress. It allows individuals to express their opinions, <coughs> advocate for change and engage in dialogue about uh, pressing issues, I mean uh, the existing problems about pressing issues. Effective verbal communication is at the heart of democratic societies enabling informed decision making and collective actions. To enhance verbal communication skills, individuals can engage in various practices. Active listening, a critical component of effective communication, involves giving undivided attention to the speaker, understanding the message and providing uh, appropriate feedback, proper feedback and also expanding one's vocabulary, improving pronunciation and understanding cultural nuances can significantly enhance verbal communication proficiency. In conclusion, we can say verbal communication is a powerful tool that facilitates understanding, builds relationships, drives professional success and fosters societal progress. Mastering the art of effective verbal expression is essential for both personal and professional growth. Through clear, empathetic and persuasive verbal communication, 
individuals can understand the complexity of life and the difficulties of life connect with others and contribute meaningfully to society so some of the questions we can ask what is the primary component of verbal communication a words b body language c emojis d sounds that is words verbal communication primarily involves the use of words to convey messages and information which of the following is a barrier to effective verbal communication a active listening b noise c proper enunciation proper enunciation clear message noise noise can disrupt the communication process making it difficult to accurately receive or interpret verbal messages what is noise it is a disturbance suppose you know the students are in the class you know from outside you know, they listen to music all on a sudden the music is played outside so it is a distraction it is a noise in their uh, communication the communication in the classroom doesn't go smoothly because of the uh, music outside you know that is the barrier to effective verbal verbal communication so that is the idea here noise right noise can disrupt the communication process making it difficult to accurately receive or interpret verbal messages which of the following is an example of non verbal communication a speaking loudly b using formal language c nodding in agreement d writing a letter so nodding in agreement which of the following is an example of non verbal communication nodding in agreement non verbal communication involves gestures facial expressions and body language such as nodding to convey messages what is a key element of effective verbal communication a monotone voice b active listening c talking over others d complex vocabulary that is active listening key element of effective verbal communication is active listening you know when the receiver actively listen to the speaker then only he can understand the full message that is the idea here active listening is very very important in communication process active listening involves fully understanding and responding to a speaker a crucial important element of effective verbal communication which of the following is an essential skill for effective verbal communication a interruptions b empathy c speaking quickly d using jargon correct answer will be empathy that is empathy helps in understanding others perspectives others views and feelings enhancing the effectiveness of verbal communication that is to put others ideas as if your ideas therefore you feel their feelings you know in your heart that is the idea of empathy you know put uh, you know uh, in your shoes put others in your shoes like empathy helps in understanding others perspectives and feelings enhancing the effectiveness of verbal communication so being you know affectionate sympathetic so that is the idea here so you understand others perspective and feelings with sympathy that is empathy okay what is a common outcome of effective verbal communication <coughs> a misunderstanding b conflict resolution c disinterest d lack of engagement that is conflict resolution effective verbal communication can help resolve conflicts by promoting understanding and compromise which of the following is a verbal communication channel a text message b facial expression c posture d gesture that is a text message text messages involve using written words to communicate and they are a form of verbal communication text messages that are written now in the paper like in verbal communication what is the importance of active listening a it is not necessary for effective communication b it helps the speaker feel important c it enhances understanding and connection d it distracts from the conversation it enhances understanding and connection in verbal communication what is the importance of active listening it enhances understanding and connection active listening is crucial in verbal communication as it promotes a better comprehension and strengthens the relationship between the communicator and the listener which of the following is an example of a barrier to effective verbal communication a using clear and concise language b providing feedback 
she is speaking loudly, the using technical jargon. That is using technical jargon. Technical jargon can be a barrier to effective communication as it may not be understood by everyone in the conversation. What is technical jargon? Technical words in other words. Suppose a chemistry uh, expert, a chemistry person uh, talks about his uh, uh, the equation and uh, other things about chem chemistry. A Tamil student or an English student may not understand what he is speaking because those technical words only the chemistry students will understand. That is called technical jargon. Jargon. Technical jargon means that it can be a barrier to effective communication. So, in the midst of uh, uh, you know people who do not know anything about chemistry, if you use uh, chemistry words, then they will not understand anything. You know, it will be like uh, uh, Greek and Latin. No, nothing they will understand. So that is called a technical jargon. Technical jargon can be a barrier to effective communication. What is the role of para language in verbal communication? Para language. Yeah, it refers a para language means. You know, sometimes you know, in between you are giving, or all of a sudden you raise your tone, um, all on a sudden you know, mm, like that you are saying. And the speed, all of a sudden you speed up your, uh, you know, uh, words, you speed up your speech, something like that. So, para language, you know, that, those things, you know, it relates to vocal cues like tone, pitch and speed. Okay, that is the idea. What is the role of para language in verbal communication? That is, it relates to vocal cues like tone, pitch and speed. Yeah. Mm -hmm like that no and then pitch uh, for uh, you know uh, emphasizing certain important facts all on a sudden you are raising your pitch what is a set what is a set a set is a well a group of a group of well defined objects what is a set a set is a group of well defined objects you know like that no you are using your vocal cues in order to give the importance to certain words or to certain concepts like this. That is the idea. Para language encompasses vocal cues that convey meaning such as tone of voice, pitch and speed of speech. Which communication style is characterized by a focus on others' needs and feelings and a reluctance to express one's own emotions? Which communication style is characterized by a focus on others' needs and feelings and a reluctance to express one's own emotions? See, that is passive. Now, if you are unable to express anything at all, you are a passive person. That is the idea here. You know, a passive communication style is marked by a lack of self-expression and an emphasis on others' needs and feelings. That is the idea here. Uh, when should you avoid using sarcasm in uh, verbal communication? Sarcasm means, you know, in a mockery, you know, you are saying something in order to, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, give something special, you know, uh, or in the nayandi, so nayandi, nayandi, you know, that is sarcasm. Uh, so, when should you avoid using sarcasm in verbal communication? Yeah, always a sarcasm is never appropriate. Be only in formal settings. See in situations where it may be misunderstood or offensive. D when speaking with close friends and family. In situations where it may be misunderstood or offensive. For an example, in a group of people, if you are having you know, such words, sarcastic remarks and all, friends may take it very nicely. Suppose uh, you know a person who doesn't like you is there. So if you make uh, some sarcastic remark, he may find it uh, offensive and then he may uh, quarrel with you. That is the idea. So when should you avoid using sarcasm in verbal communication? When in situations where it may be misunderstood or offensive. In those situations you should not use sarcasm. Of course, sarcasm can be used. You know, it is the spice, spice of life you know, to make others happy sometimes. It is possible provided others accept. That, that is the point here. So, sarcasm can be misinterpreted or offensive, so it is best to avoid it in such situations. What is the purpose of feedback in verbal communication? What is the purpose of feedback in verbal communication? A. To dominate the conversation. B. To interrupt the speaker. C. To provide information or response. 
T to convey agreement. Correct answer will be to provide information or response. Feedback in verbal communication serves the purpose of providing information or a response to what has been said. Feedback in verbal communication serves the purpose of providing information or a response to what has been said. What is a verbal filler and why should it be minimized in communication? What is a verbal filler? A. Verbal, verbal filler is slang and should be encouraged. B. Verbal filler is excessive talking and it keeps the conversation engaged. Like that there are four. Which is the right one? Verbal filler is the use of unnecessary words or sounds and it can be distracting. Uh, for example, suppose I am going to say, you see, um, uh, verbal filler, mm, it is the use of uh, um, unnecessary words um, or so, like this, uh, suppose I am saying like that, it is a verbal filler. Verbal filler includes unnecessary words or sounds like mm, ooh, and should be minimized to maintain clarity in communication. Non-verbal communication. This is when you express things without using words. This is when you express things without using words. Think of a smile, a frown, your wave or a thumbs up. Your body language and facial expressions are a powerful non-verbal ways of communicating. Effective non-verbal communication. Next topic, the silent language of expression. Communication is a multifaceted process that extends beyond verbal exchanges. Non-verbal communication, often referred to as the silent language, plays a important plays an important role, plays a vital role in conveying thoughts, feelings, and intentions without using words. It encompasses uh, gestures, facial expressions, uh, body language, posture eye contact, tone of voice and even proxemics, use of space, that is called a proxemics. So all these things uh, are involved in, you know, uh, non-verbal communication. What is the importance of non-verbal communication? Non-verbal communication is uh, critical as it uh, supplements and complements verbal messages. So non-verbal communication also is needed to make the message very complete or more meaningful you know, more rich, richer perhaps. It provides context, emotional cues, non-verbal non communication provides context, emotional cues and a deeper understanding of the speaker's intentions. In fact, research suggests that a significant portion of our communication is non-verbal, often outweighing the importance of verbal communication. Understanding and utilizing non-verbal cues can lead to more effective and meaningful interactions. Components of non-verbal communication. Facial expression. Facial expression is very important, no? non-verbal communication. Faces are powerful communicators of emotions. Expressions like smiles, frowns, raised eyebrows or narrowed eyes can convey happiness, anger, surprise or skepticism. The face acts as a mirror reflecting the emotions within our heart. The gestures, hand movements, arm positions and other bodily gestures can emphasize or modify the spoken message. For instance, waving, pointing or giving a thumbs up can convey various meanings. Then posture and body language. The way one carries themselves, whether standing tall, slouching, crossing arms or leaning forward speaks volumes about confidence, interest and openness to communication. Eye contact. The eyes are often referred to as the window of the soul. Maintaining appropriate eye contact signifies attentiveness and engagement while avoiding it may suggest discomfort or dishonest, uh, uh, dishonestly, dishonesty, very sorry, dishonesty. The eyes are often referred to as the window of the soul. So maintaining proper eye contact indicates attentiveness or engagement while avoiding it may suggest discomfort or dishonesty. Tone of voice, the tone, pitch, volume and intonation in which words are spoken can be emotions, attitudes and meanings that can either enhance or contradict the verbal message. Proximates. The use of space can indicate the level of intimacy or formality in a relationship. For example, standing closer to someone 
can signify closeness and comfort, while maintaining distance can indicate respect or formality. That is called the proximity, the place, no? That is. Next one, impact on relationships. Nonverbal communication significantly impacts relationships, both personal and professional. A genuine smile or a warm hug can express affection and build a rapport, while crossed arms and averted gaze can create barriers and distance. Understanding nonverbal cues help in interpreting emotions and intentions accurately, thereby fostering better relationships based on trust, understanding and empathy. Effective use of nonverbal communication. Awareness. We need awareness for uh, you know effective use of nonverbal communication. Being mindful of your own nonverbal cues and recognizing those of others is the first step. Self-awareness enables you to control and use nonverbal communication more effectively. Practice empathy. Empathize with the others by turning into their nonverbal cues. Understand their emotions and respond accordingly, demonstrating that you care and are genuinely engaged. Consistency, consistency with verbal communication. Ensure that your nonverbal cues align with your verbal message. Inconsistency can lead to confusion and mistrust. Adaptability. Tailor your nonverbal communication based on the situation and cultural norms. Different cultures may interpret nonverbal cues differently, so being adaptable is essential for effective communication. Receive feedback. Be open to receiving feedback about your nonverbal communication. It is a valuable tool for self improvement and enhancing your ability to connect with others. So, to control, what can we say? By being mindful of nonverbal signals and learning to interpret and utilize them effectively. Individuals can enhance their communication skills and foster meaningful connections with others. Some of the questions we can ask, what is a commonly recognized nonverbal communication signal or cue that indicates openness and receptiveness? Commonly recognized nonverbal communication cue that indicates openness and receptiveness. That is, you receive others or you are happy to be with others. You know, there what type of uh, nonverbal communication cue you will show. A. Arms crossed. B. Maintaining eye contact. C. Frowning. D. Tapping fingers. Maintaining eye contact. Maintaining eye contact is often seen as a positive nonverbal cue indicating openness and attentiveness in communication, while options A, C, and D typically suggest discomfort, negativity, or impatience. Which nonverbal cue is associated with confidence and self assuredness? Assuredness. Uh, self assurance, in other words. A. Slouching posture. B. Nervous of foot taping. C. Firm handshake. D. Avoiding eye contact. So, which nonverbal signal is associated with confidence? Firm handshake. A firm handshake is a nonverbal cue that often conveys confidence and self assurance. While options A, B, D typically suggest nervousness or lack of confidence. What nonverbal cue is often associated with deception or dishonesty? A direct eye contact, B hand gestures matching speech, C excessive blinking, D relaxed facial expressions. So, what nonverbal signal is often associated with deception or dishonesty? That is excessive blinking. Excessive blinking can be a nonverbal cue associated with the deception or nervousness, while options A, B, and D are generally seen as signs of truthfulness and confidence. See the, the direct eye contact, hand gesture, matching speech, excessive blinking, relaxed facial expression. Three are positive, one is negative. That is, excessive blinking means you know you are just often you know uh, opening and closing the eyes so speedily. You know that is excessive blinking. Excessive blinking can be a nonverbal cue. Yes, which nonverbal cue is considered a universal display of happiness and friendliness? A smiling, B furrowed eyebrows, C crossed relax, D head tilting. 
that is smiling. Smiling is a universally recognized and non-verbal signal associated with happiness and friendliness while absence of B, C and D can be different emotional states. Which non-verbal cue is often used to express confusion or display? A. Head nodding, B. Raised eyebrows, C. Leaning forward, D. Arms at sides. Which non-verbal cue is often used to express confusion or display? That is raised eyebrows. Whenever we come across some confusing statements or confusing situation, we raise our eyebrows. So that is what is given here. Raised eyebrows can be a non-verbal cue used to express confusion or disbelief, while options A, C, and T convey different meanings or gestures. What non-verbal cue is commonly associated with the defensive or guarded uh, attitude? You know, you, you are uh, at your defense, you know, without getting into any fault, without without getting into any uh, serious problem, you are so defensive. So, which posture is that? A. Relaxed posture. B. Open arms. C. Crossed legs. D. Tightly folded arms. That is tightly folded arms. Tightly folded arms typically indicate defensiveness or a guarded attitude, while options A, B, C are different. In non-verbal communication, what does leaning towards someone usually indicate? A. Disinterest B. Engagement and interest C. Aggression D. Boredom So in non-verbal communication, what does leaning towards someone usually indicate? That is engagement and interest. Leaning towards someone is a non-verbal cue that often indicates engagement and interest in the conversation while options A, C, D are different. Which non-verbal, so once again I just see, I am just going fast I think. In non-verbal communication, what does leaning towards someone usually indicate? That is engagement and interest. You are interested in the person. That's why that leaning, no? That's the thing. You know, leaning towards someone. You are, uh, suppose, uh, as if you are falling on the other person. You are so close to that person. That's the idea here. Yeah? Engagement and interest. What, uh, which non-verbal cue is associated with the lack of confidence or submission? A. Standing tall and straight. B. Hand clasping behind the back. C. Making direct eye contact. D. Slouching or uh, hunching, uh, hunching shoulders. Slouching or hunching shoulders. That is the idea here. Yeah? Uh, it is associated with the lack of confidence or submissions. You are fearful. So, lack of confidence. So, slouching or hunching soldiers is a non-verbal signal associated with a lack of confidence or submission while options A, B and C can be more confident body language. Just to see standing tall and straight confidence. Uh, hand clasping began the back confidence. You make direct eye contact confidence. Whereas, hunching soldiers, no, you make your soldiers hunch, you know, uh, shrink like. Then it is uh, it is showing uh, fear, something like no. So lack of confidence or submission or fear. Which nonverbal cue is commonly used to convey approval or agreement in a group setting? A nodding, B tapping the table, C crossing legs, D folding arms. Nodding. Nodding is a nonverbal cue often used to convey approval or agreement, especially in a group setting. Of course, other options are different, yes. Nodding, no? nodding is a non-verbal cue, is often used to convey approval or agreement. Which non-verbal cue is often used to convey dominance or assertiveness? A. Smirking, B. Open hands, suggest, uh, gestures, C. Taking up space, D. Avoiding eye contact, taking up space, simply, you know, uh, walking here and there, using the entire space like you no. Know? So that is the that conveys a dominance and assertiveness. Without standing in one place, just you, you just take one step here and there, something like. That. So taking of space, taking of space through expansive gestures or posture is a non-verbal cue often associated with the dominance or assertiveness. Of course, other options are different. Now let us enter into written communication. Written communication means using written words to share information. It includes writing letters, sending emails or texting on your phone, sending messages. Effective communication is important in our daily lives. 
It helps us express our thoughts, ideas and emotions to others. One strong way to communicate is through writing. Writing has a special power because it can last a long time and it will be very clear. Writing is powerful because it keeps a record of what we think and mean. Unlike speaking which can be forgotten, writing stays and can be read over and over, repeatedly can be read. When we write, we can think carefully about what we want to say and choose the right words. This helps us make sure our message is clear and understood. So effective writing has some important parts like clarity and precision, exactness, correctness. This means writing in a way that is easy to understand and leaves no confusion, clarity and precision. Then organization and structure. Good writing is organized and easy to follow. It has a clear flow of ideas and uses the headings and paragraphs well. Organization and structure. Then grammar and mechanics. Using correct grammar, punctuation and spelling is crucial, important. Mistakes in these areas can make writing hard to, un hard to understand and less credible. A mistake in these areas, grammar and mechanics, can make writing hard to understand and less credible. Audience awareness. Knowing who will read your writing helps you write in a way that suits them best. Audience awareness. You know, if you are going to write to, you know, uh, some higher ups, some official, then you will be extremely careful. The audience awareness is very essential. We need to, you know, script, you know, our letters so nicely, so beautifully, so logically everything. So audience awareness. Then conciseness, conciseness and brevity. Conciseness and brevity. What is this? Uh, exactness and, you know, short form, no? Uh, precise, no? that is the idea, brevity, short and sweet. Concise, uh, conciseness and brevity, conciseness and brevity. Writing briefly and to the point is important. Too many unnecessary words can make it hard for readers to understand. Engagement and persuasion, conviction. Uh, good writing keeps readers interested and can convince them to agree with your ideas. Good writing keeps readers interested with a choice of words, nice words and uh, you know in a logical manner and then you are using you know uh, you are writing from your heart all these things help others to understand your message and uh, they are able to agree with your ideas. So good writing keeps readers interested and can convince them to agree with your ideas, engagement and persuasion, conviction. Writing well is useful in many areas, academic success. Students need good writing skills to do well in school. They need to write clearly and convincingly in assignments and exams. Then professional work. In the workplace, clear writing is important for success. Professionals need to write emails, reports and presentations that are easy to understand. Then publications and journals. Journalism. Writers use good writing to inform and influence readers in newspapers, books and online. Then legal and administrative communication. Writing clearly is crucial in legal documents and workplace communication to avoid confusion and disagreements. To conclude, we can say like this, writing well is a powerful tool. It helps us express ourselves clearly and persuasively, which is important in many areas of life. By learning how to write effectively, we can achieve our goals and succeed in our efforts, endeavors. Some of the questions, which of the following is a fundamental component of written communication? Which of the following is a fundamental component of written communication? A. Vocabulary. B. Facial expressions. C. Body language. D. Tone of voice. That is vocabulary. Vocabulary is essential. That is word, no? The word back, no? That is a vocabulary. Vocabulary is essential in written communication to convey ideas and messages accurately. We must know, uh, we must use the right of our words in the right place. You know, there is, then we should have proper vocabulary. You know, the bank of words. In written communication, what does the term proofreading primarily involve? A. Checking for grammatical errors. B. Evaluating tone and mood. C. Assessing the layout and design. 
they are analyzing the target audience. That is checking for grammatical errors. That is, uh, you know, proofreading. You know, checking for grammatical errors. That is called proofreading. Proofreading involves reviewing the text for grammar, punctuation, and spelling errors. Which of the following is a formal form of written communication often used in business? Which of the following is a formal form of written communication often used in business? A. Email. B. Text message. C. Memo. D. Tweet. That is memo. A memo is a formal written communication used in organizations for internal communication. The following options are formal forms of written communication. Often used in business letter. Business letters are formal documents used for communication between businesses, uh, clients, <coughs> customers, or other parties. They follow a specific format and tone suitable for professional correspondence. Memorandum memo. <coughs> Memos are brief written messages used for internal communication within an organization. They are typically used to convey information, make announcements or request uh, action uh, among em employees or departments. That is the idea here. Then email. Well, email can vary in uh, formality depending on the context and the recipients. It is often used for formal communication in business settings. Formal emails typically follow the professional standards in terms of language, structure and tone. Then report. Reports are formal documents that present information, analysis, findings or recommendations on a specific topic or issue. They are commonly used in business for conveying research results, project updates, financial performance or other important information. All of these forms of written communication play significant roles in business interactions, each serving specific purposes and audiences. Some of the questions we can discuss here. What is the purpose of a persuasive written communication? A. To inform and educate. B. To entertain the reader. C. To persuade or convince. D. To describe and narrate. Correct answer will be to persuade or convince. The main aim of persuasive writing is to influence the reader's beliefs or actions. What is the advantage of using an outline in the writing process? In the writing process? A. Enhances a grammar and vocabulary. B. Organizes thoughts and ideas. C. Applies a formatting and styling. D. Adds a creativity in the content. Outline. Now, see, before writing the essay, normally we will ask the students to give in a table what they are going to write. That is the outline. You know, introduction, the body, conclusion, no? uh, different topics, different subheadings, everything. No? So, that is called outline in the writing process. So it organizes thoughts and ideas. For that reason we are asking. Outline helps in organizing and structuring the content before writing, making the process more coherent and logic. I mean, uh, in a, in coherent means what's the logic? Logical, sequential, sequential, I mean one by one. You know, that is the idea here. Yeah? When is the use of jargon and technical terms appropriate in written communication? Yes. When, when is the use of jargon and technical terms appropriate in written communication? A. Always B. When targeting a general audience C. When communicating with, with the experts in the field D. In personal letters When communicating with the experts in the field we can use jargon and technical terms uh, uh, peculiarly meant for that particular uh, discipline, particular area. Jargon technical terms are appropriate when communicating with the individuals knowledgeable in the subject matter. For example, chemistry, all uh, postgraduate people, no? uh, students in chemistry or mathematics or engineering. In the technical words only they can understand, others may not understand. That is called the jargon and technical terms. No? So, which element is crucial for establishing a formal tone in business writing? Which element is crucial for establishing a formal tone in business writing? A. Use of uh, contractions. Use of contractions. B. Informal language. D. Long and complex sentences. D. Professional language. 
Correct answer will be professional language. Using professional language helps in establishing a formal tone in business writing. In written communication, what does the term conciseness refer to? Concession means exactness, correctness, uh, brief to say it in a brief manner. No? That is conciseness. Short and sweet to sometimes we say. So that is A providing detailed explanations. B using unnecessary filler words. C being clear up to the point. D utilizing complex vocabulary. What is the correct answer? Being clear up to the point. Conciseness involves conveying information clearly and directly without unnecessary elaboration. What is the purpose of a resume in written communication? A to showcase, to showcase achievements and qualifications, B to provide personal anecdotes, C to express creative writing skills, D to share personal opinions. Resume, you know, whenever we go for uh, go hunting for jobs and all, we give the resume. Whatever we have studied, whatever we have achieved, you know, what we can do, everything, you know. So all those things will be uh, found in resume, you know, what's resume. So, uh, what is the purpose of resume in written communication? That is what is uh, asked. To showcase achievements and qualifications, that's important. A resume is a document used to highlight an individual's professional achievements, skills and qualifications for potential employment opportunities. What is the primary purpose of a business memo? A to persuade, B to entertain, C to inform, D to apologize to inform. Business memos are primarily used to convey information such as updates, announcements or instructions. They are called business memos. Which of the following is an example of formal written communication? A. Text message, B. Postcard, C. Email, D. Business letter. So what is the, what is the question? Which of the following is an example of formal written communication? It is business letter. It has to be very formal. You know, uh, whatever you have to say, you have to say with in, in clear manner, in clear words. You know, that's business letter. So business letters are typically more formal and structured than text messages, postcards, or emails. There we can be little more lax, you know, in uh, in writing certain words and all. But here, business letters you have to be very formal. That's the idea here. Which part of a business report provides a brief overview of the report's content? Which part of a business report provides a brief overview of the report's content? A. Executive summary. B. Introduction. C. Conclusion. D. Recommendation. Executive summary. Executive summary. An executive summary gives a concise overview of the main points and findings of a report. An executive summary gives a concise overview of the main points and findings of a report. Which of the following is an example of non-verbal communication in written form? So, what is the example of non-verbal communication in written form with regard to these four options? A. An emoji in the email. B. A bullet point list. C. A signature at the end of a letter. D. A salutation in a memo. So, an emoji in an email. Emojis are a form of non-formal communication when used in written text. Which of the following is an advantage of written communication over verbal communication? So, advantage of written communication over verbal communication. A. Immediate feedback. B. Non-permanence. Non C. Clarity and precision. D. Non-verbal cues. Clarity and precision. So that, that's an advantage of written communication or verbal communication. Verbal communications, you know, sometimes we miss the word and again you, uh, you know, say it differently. You know, whereas the same thing you cannot do it in written communication. You should plan out well and then you must use the right words and everything. That is the advantage of written communication. Clarity and precision, correctness. Written communication allows for the use of precise language and is less prone to misinterpretation. In a formal in a formal report, what section typically provides a detailed analysis of the topic or issue being discussed? A introduction, B executive summary, C recommendations, D findings or analysis. Findings or analysis. 
So that is the idea. The section provides the detailed analysis of the topic or issue. What is the purpose of a subject line in an email or memo? That is to provide a summary of the message, B to greet the recipient, C to express gratitude, D to attach files. That is to provide a summary of the message. You know, you could have seen in the email or the bar, there the subject line, they will give some. No? Uh, there you will give the summary of the letter. The subject line gives the recipient a quick overview of the email or memo's content. Which of the following is an example of informal written communication? A. A research paper. B. A text message to a friend. C. A business proposal. D. A legal contract. Which of the following is an example of informal written communication? It is a text message. A text message to a friend. Text messages to friends are typically more informal, while research papers, business proposals and legal contracts are formal documents. So text messages to friends are typically more informal, you have to understand that, whereas other research papers, business proposals, legal contracts are formal documents following certain rules and regulations. Then visual communication. Visual communication uh, includes uh, pictures, uh, symbols, uh, graphs and maps. These visuals convey messages without using words. For example, a stop sign, you know, you would have seen you know, on the main road, you know, the policeman uh, having it in his hand. Stop sign board. The stop sign communicates its meaning without any written words. The power of visual communication. Visual communication is powerful because humans are naturally drawn to visuals. What we can see uh, remains in our mind for a longer time. That is the idea here. Our brains uh, process uh, visual information faster and remember it better compared to just uh, text or spoken words. Studies suggest that about 65% of the people learn better through visuals, showing how important visuals are in communication. And enhanced comprehension. Visuals make complex ideas easier, easier to understand by breaking them into smaller parts. They help organize data, show trends, and illustrate connections between concepts. Charts and graphs make it easy to understand numbers. Then memory retention. Visuals leave a lasting impression on memory. People remember information better when it is accompanied by images. Visual data is not only easier to understand, but also easier to recall. Then universal understanding. Visuals can be understood by people regardless of language or culture. Symbols and images are commonly understood, making them useful for reaching diverse audiences. Emotional connection. Images can stir emotions, creating a stronger bond with the audience. Whether it is a photo capturing a moment, or a well-made infographic, infographic, sorry, infographic, visuals can evoke empathy, excitement or motivation. What are the advantages of visual communication? Clarity and simplicity, uh, uh, sorry, clarity and simplicity, clarity and simplicity. Visuals simplify complex ideas into easy to understand representations. They focus on the main message and remove unnecessary details. Clarity and simplicity. Then attention and engagement. Visuals quickly grab attention and keep the audience engaged longer. They encourage participation and interaction. Then versatility. Versatility is speed, you know, speed and correctness. Visuals can be used in various ways like presentations, posters, social media and apps. Effectiveness, versatility. This flexibility makes them useful in communication. You know, there's certain number of different types of uh, uh, visuals you can make. No? That is posters, posters, uh, posters, uh, social media, and ads. That's called versatility. I mean, visuals can be made in different forms. In other words, that speed and efficiency. Visuals convey a lot of information quickly. People can grasp the main points fast, making visual communication efficient. Speed and efficiency. Effective use of visual communication. How to use visual communication effectively? Understanding the audience. It is important to tailor visuals to match the audience preferences and needs. 
knowing that demographics helps design visuals they will connect with. Then choosing the right visuals. Different messages need different visuals. Data might need graphs, while stories could use images. Picking the right visuals boosts the message's impact. Then maintaining consistency. Using consistent colors, fonts, and branding across communication materials creates a unified and professional look. It builds a strong visual identity. Then testing and feedback. Before finalizing visuals, it is good to test them with a small audience and get feedback. This helps find areas for improvement. Some of the questions, which color model is used to primarily for electronic displays such as computer monitors and television screens? And what is this? It's a technical thing. RGB, red, green, blue is the color model used for electronic displays because it combines these primary colors to create wide range of uh, colors on screens. Red, green, blue, RGB you know, that is used in uh, computer monitors and television screens. In, uh, so I would say RGB that is red, green, blue. In typography, what does a kerning refer to? Kerning. In typography, what does kerning refer to? Yeah, adjusting the space between letters. B adjusting the font size. C changing the font type. D adjusting line spacing. Adjusting the space between letters. That is that is called a kerning. So kerning is the process of adjusting the spacing between characters in a font to improve readability and aesthetics. So that is the idea here, kerning. What is the acronym UI stand for in the context of visual communication? User interface. A user interface, B universal icon, C uniform illustration, D user intuition. User interface. UA stands for user interface referring to the graphical layout and design of an application or system that users interact with. Which file format is widely used for vector based graphics? Which file format is widely used for vector based graphics? That is SVG. SVG that means a scalable vector graphics is a file format commonly used for vector based graphics allowing for scalability without loss of quality. What is the acronym CMYK stand for in the context of color printing? What is the acronym CMYK? That is a CMYK represents the four ink plates used in color printing. No, the cyan, magneto, yellow, and key. No, CMYK represents the four ink plates used in the color printing. So they are all technical ideas uh, connected with the you know uh, computer everything. What is the acronym CMYK stand for in the context of color printing? That is cyan, magneto, yellow, yeah, uh, then black. CMYK represents the four ink plates used in color printing, cyan, uh, cyan or cyan, magneto, yellow or the key. In visual communication, what does hierarchy refer to? In visual communication, what does hierarchy refer to? A. Arranging elements based on size, arranging elements based on importance, arranging elements alphabetically, T. Arranging elements based on color, arranging elements based on importance. Hierarchy involves organizing visual elements to guide the viewer's attention and understanding by placing the most important elements prominently. So that is called hierarchy. What is the primary purpose of visual communication? Uh, sorry, visual communication. What is the primary purpose of visual communication? There are four options. That is to communicate using images, graphics and visual. That is the purpose of visual communication. Visual communication primarily involves conveying information and messages through the use of images, graphics and visual elements. Which of the following color combinations provides the highest contrast? Highest contrast. That is black and white. Black and white offer the highest level of contrast in visual communication, making content more legible and distinct. 
in graphic design what is the rule of thirds graphic design what is the rule of thirds it's a very important so it's also a technical thing the rule of thirds is a grid system that divides the image into nine equal parts helping to create balanced and visually appealing compositions that there is a rule of thumb i mean the same frame should be split into three areas out of nine you know say there is a grid system that divides image into nine equal parts so from that you can just you know uh, you can uh, uh, categorize into different things you know each you know one of the thirds can be put for something else another third another third something like so it creates a balanced and visually appealing composite composition that is the idea here what is the purpose of typography in visual communication what is the purpose of typography in visual communication Typography in visual communication involves organizing and presenting text in a visually appealing and effective way to convey a message. What is the purpose of wire frames in web design? What is the purpose of wire frames in a web design? That is to outline the layout and structure of a web page that is that is the uh, purpose of wire frames wire frames are used to, in web design to outline the layout and structure of a web page defining the placement of elements without focusing on visual design so that is the understanding now what is the term for the intentional alteration of an image perspective to create a dramatic effect what is the term for the intentional alteration i mean what or not plan the change intentional no plan the change of an image perspective to create a dramatic effect a cropping distortion saturation a sharpening that is a distortion it's all technical uh, things you know in uh, you know in uh, viscom perhaps communication viscom uh, visual communication distortion is the intentional alteration of an image perspective to create a dramatic effect often used in art and photography which file format is best for images with a transparent background which file format is best for images with a transparent background that is gif the gif file format is commonly used for images with a transparent background making it suitable for web graphics and animations the effective group communication dear friends i think uh, i may need to you know end here and maybe i'll just uh, begin this due to some emergency situation i will just uh, do it after two or three years perhaps you know so uh, with this this video ends the rest of the thing will be given in another video uh, thank you for your presence kindly subscribe in case you haven't subscribed yet uh, so i'm so happy that so many of you are watching my video thank you for your presence god bless you abundantly let us meet in other video lectures uh, the same uh, you know communication the second part part b will be a coming so now this i will be uploading in youtube and giving it to you god bless you abundantly